Hey guys, how's it going? Jose here. So I am back with another video and this time we're going to take a first look at the Samsung NU8000. I finally put it together. I finally did the unboxing. If you're interested in the unboxing, make sure you check out my Patreon account. I'm going to leave links in the description because I have exclusive videos for patrons that I do the unboxing. I show what's inside. I put it together. So if you're interested in that and you want to support the channel, make sure you check the link in the description. All right. So now let's jump into my first impressions. And the first thing I got to tell you guys is that this whole TV is made of plastic, which is not bad plastic. And, and this is like a high quality plastic, in my opinion. But also another thing I noticed is this is a very heavy TV. I mean, compared to the uh, TCL R6, that one TV is kind of heavy. But remember, that TV is full array and also is metal aluminum frame. But this TV is plastic and it's heavy, very, very heavy. So now let's jump into something that I found very important for you guys. This um, first, let me take a look. Let's take a look at the ports. So right here on top, we have two USB ports, right? Then over here, we have the optical cable for your audio. Let's see if I can get closer. Let's see. There you go. So that's the optical cable for your audio. And then be below that, we have four USB HDMI ports. What I mean is that all these HDMI ports support HDR. So let's say that you have your Xbox, your PC, your PlayStation 4 Pro, and then you also have a 4K player. All of them are going to support HDR. So that's very cool. Then over here, we have the LAN cable for your internet. This one also has Wi-Fi. So if you don't have to, if you don't want to connect your cable, that's fine. And then over here, we have the antenna or cable port right here, the cable. All right. So another thing that I found very important is the cable management. This is something that this TV is offering this time. So one thing I noticed about this cable management, it has four, four rails or four ports for you guys to use for different cables. That is really cool. But one thing to keep in notice is that keep in mind is that there are different sizes. So you see this cable right here, this is from the Xbox One X. Now, if you have that cable, you notice that it's not that fat, it's not that thick. It's kind of skinny, but it's good. It actually fits perfectly in this rail. Maybe also in the second one. Let me try. Oh, that's the second. Oh, okay. It fits on the second one. It doesn't fit on the first one. All right. So as you guys can see, it's different sizes. So then the we have a third one and a fourth one. So this other cable that I have here, this one came with the uh, one of the BenQ monitors that I reviewed a few months ago. But this one only fits only fits on the fourth rail. It doesn't fit on the third one. Let me see if I can show you real quick. So you see, it just <laughs> it doesn't fit. You have to move it all the way to the bottom. All right. And it's very easy once you 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 put it in in there. It's very easy. It just goes super, super easy. All right. So for just to keep in mind, I wanted to show you that let's say that you have one of those remember i also review one of this hdmi 2.1 cable from amazon and this one definitely does not fit in there at all it just doesn't fit guys so if you have one of these cables forget it also a few months ago too i reviewed this other cable this is another hdmi 2.0 this one does fit the ford rail but this is braided so also, I also noticed that braided cables, they're not as flexible as the original black cables that we normally buy. So just, just want to make, consider that braided cables, they're not going to bend that well. So that is something that you might want to consider what kind of cables you have, because not all of them are going to work here on this cable management thing. And over here on the left hand side, if you're facing the TV, you have the power cable which also goes into the first rail. It fits perfectly right there. And then it goes right here. Everything goes into the center. Once you have everything put together, then you can just put the cover in there. Boom, there you go. All the cable management, your cable management looks beautiful on this TV and you don't have any cables showing in the back. All right, so now that is done, Let's jump into the front of the TV and turn it on for the first time. 
All right, guys. So finally, we have all everything set up. So, you know, I connected the antenna. So this is over the air. And I got to say, the quality, it, it's okay. Uh, I don't expect anything from over the air. Mostly when I when I watch TVs from, uh, from uh, this. When I watch my TV program shows right here, I use Netflix or I use a uh, uh, movie or I use the Xbox. I hardly ever watch over the air programs. But just in case if you're interested in... The, uh, the upscaling, it doesn't look that great. Like I said, this is over the air, so I don't expect much from this. Plus, uh, you know, there's some channels that are, are uh, HD, but that's it. All right, so before I connect my PlayStation 4 Pro, I wanted to show you some of the settings. We're going to go through some of the settings over here on this TV. Now, I'm living, I have not changed anything, so I'm using standard picture mode. And we can go over here and we can choose now. Actually, you know what? Let's go into settings so you guys can see how they change. So standard is the one that I'm using for for this over the air right now. And I think it looks great. I think it's like the, the best one. This is dynamic, but as always, dynamic is very bright and it's just too cold of an image. Of course, you can change this if you want to, but standard is kind of like the one that looks the best right now. Natural, it looks okay as well. But uh, I noticed natural, the colors are usually oversaturated. Let me turn off this light, this LED light right now. Okay, there you go. All right. And then movie, movie is always dark. Movie, I notice movie colors are more like natural and more accurate as they usually are. But movie is always dark. So the backlight is all the way down to 21. Right. As you can always adjust this. All right. You can always customize this as your own as how you want it but let's let's use um right now let's use standard okay so let's just use standard for right now and then uh let's go into the expert settings okay and these are the settings that are just out of the box i have not changed anything so i'm just going to leave it for for how it is right now because we're going to jump into the uh playstation 4 pro and we're going to check out the settings with HDR, gaming, and everything, all right? I just wanted to show you how this TV looks over the air. And like I said, I don't, I don't, it's nothing that I, I, I will say, wow, it looks upscale to 4K. It's not. It just looks just over the air and regular. This is probably like a 480p, not even 720p. This is probably like 480p, so... Uh, maybe cable look probably better, but I don't expect much from this one. So let's connect the PlayStation 4 Pro now. All right, guys, so here we go. We finally put the PlayStation 4 Pro together, and I wanted to test the, the game mode with motion interpolation added to it. And there's some good news, and there are some bad news in my opinion, but maybe you guys won't really care about it. But I'm going to show you how this is. So first... As soon as I connect to the PlayStation, the that's, this TV detects it right away. It's just like super, super fast. I like how this uh, the operating system is faster, much faster than my KS. I can feel it like right away. So you see that it automatically detects the PlayStation. All right, so we're going to go into the settings. Now over here you can go, the picture settings is already set to game mode. You cannot change that unless you probably go over here and external manager and then game settings, game mode settings. You can have this to auto or you can turn it just on or just off. You see, so you have the option. I have it in auto. I don't I don't see that is anything wrong with it. I kind of like it. So, but the cool thing is that you have the option. So now let's go into game motion plus setting. Now this is also turned on automatically and as always, you have the option to set this off again. Uh, okay, so if you're seeing these white lines going, like these bars going from up and down, it, it, this is just the camera, okay? You don't see that on the TV. I don't see it on the TV, but I noticed right now on the camera. So Game Motion Plus, you can turn it off if you want to, or you can turn it back on, like I said, if you want to again. All right, so you have the option, and that is really, really cool. Now let's have test. Let's have this tested with on. And as you guys can see, this feels good. This helps reduce the judder. 
and this makes this game feels like this is a 60 frames per second game honestly I do notice the difference right away guys I do notice the difference right away but one thing I noticed too it introduces ghosting so let me show you what I mean by that if you turn this really fast look at his face you guys can see his face so that's the bad news about this that I noticed is that it still introduces ghosting every time we use motion interpolation as you guys can see it right there well sometimes it's more noticeable than other times but uh it's definitely there so if you are really sensitive to that maybe this is not good for you this is not going to be an option but other than that my goodness it feels good it feels like a, this game is actually running at 60 fps now now remember natively this game is at 30 fps but you can also change the option to 1080p with a 60 fps option right from from the from the game not from the tv so let's turn off auto motion plus the game motion all right so let's go to settings again we're going to go here to general then external device manager game mode options game motion and we can turn this off and you're going to notice that the ghosting is gone I don't see it it's pretty much gone but also the game I mean is very responsive as well but the game doesn't have that 60 FPS feeling anymore you probably won't be able to see it right here while I'm recording with the camera but I can feel it when I'm playing the game still the game I mean the game honestly feels really good but when you have that option of uh, game motion plus it's really fun it's really cool now I wonder how it would be if I if I change the game settings right here let me see if I can do this okay so this is a 1080p and now it's favoring performance so the resolution is, is it goes down to 1080p and yeah it feels now it does feel again like I'm running a 60 FPS game now this game uh, on this TV it looks really good even at 1080p my god I guess the upscaling right here with the PlayStation 4 Pro and uh, on the on this TV looks much much better oh shit let me get one of these ones oh, I need to get rid of those birds I already have like a few of them that I have seen oh. I need uh. yes <laughs> finally got 15 out of 51 Jesus I still need to work on that Wow beautiful guys so let's jump into another game shall we Alright guys, so let's jump into a game that I know is running at 30 FPS, but it doesn't have HDR. And first, my first impression is it still looks absolutely beautiful. This is Grand Theft Auto V. And as you guys know, this game it just came out years ago. Like, I don't know, like five years ago probably. And it looks absolutely beautiful on this TV. Now I'm using game mode and I'm using game with motion interpolation as well and I really notice how smooth this game turns out to be so once again this is like playing this Grand Theft Auto at 60 FPS and it just looks really really nice oh okay well it doesn't really help my driving skills while playing this game but other than that I can still enjoy the city at its maximum frames per second Oh, <laughs> I'm driving this classic old grandpa's car in uh, right here in L.A., the city of angels. So this is like I said, this is with motion interpolation game motion plus. Let me uh, let me turn this off to see if you guys can notice the difference. So. All right. So now motion interpolation is gone. And yeah, I can feel it. 
I mean, it's still a playable game, of course. But this is 30 FPS. I don't know, you kind of get used to it. After you turn on game uh, Motion Plus, you kind of really get used to it. The upscaling on this TV, it looks beautiful. I like it. I like it a lot. So uh, let me see the settings that I have this for, uh, this is an SDR game, all right? So let me actually, let me park right over here. I don't want to have any problems. So we're going to go into expert settings. Uh, I don't know if I already show you my settings or not, but anyways, let me show you the settings that I have here. I have the backlight to 35 because this is SDR. And one thing I noticed that uh, since the, the HDR, you know, your HDR, you need the backlight all the way up. But with SDR, if you don't lower it down, you, you'll notice a lot of blooming on blacks. So the contrast is not that very good on this TV. So I lowered it down to 35. I, I feel like this is a good spot. Brightness is at zero, just halfway. Contrast is at 50, which is all the way. The value is all the way that, that it could go. Sharpness is at 10 right now here. So I am going to lower this one to one. So 10, it's kind of like the same thing as 50 on the KS8000. Color is at 25, which is in the middle. It's good. And then we're gonna go local dimming is on high. You cannot change local dimming. I mean, you cannot turn it off. You can change it to low or, or standard, but we're just gonna leave it to high. Honestly, I don't notice any difference. Uh, contrast enhancer this is the same thing as dynamic contrast you can turn it off low or high and I really like it in low this time I just feel like it's uh, once again like right in the middle of everything color tone is a standard I kind of like digging standard this time even the warm one still kind of gives this yellowish tone to it and is more realistic so you know what Forget this. Let's use warm one. I always use it. Uh, gamma, the value is right in the middle. We're just going to leave it like that. Color space setting. This is on native. I notice that native colors get more punch to it. Yeah, you guys notice? Yeah, I, I really like native this time. So I, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So let's go back over here. Let's go to the general. Uh, external device manager game mode and let's turn on game motion plus once again and ah man I'm really liking this I am enjoying games at 60 FPS it doesn't matter which game it is you can still enjoy a, uh, a better frame rate so nice this is one really cool feature about this TV and in some games I noticed there is more ghosting than another than other games so it will be up to you if you want to use it the cool option about the cool thing about this feature is that you can turn it off anytime you want it's not like it's already set up like that you can turn it off anytime you want cool all right so let's jump into another game All right, guys, so now we jump into the world of Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> Sorry about my Spanglish. So anyways, this game looks absolutely beautiful. As you guys can see, this is running with HDR. Let me just check, double check. Yeah, HDR right there on top. And also I'm using Game Motion Plus feature which enhances the game the way this game looks it, i just love it man i just think it looks so so nice and colorful so i'm going to show you the settings that i'm using for hdr because these are probably a little bit different than sdr all right wow 
I'm I'm very impressed with this TV. I gotta be honest with you. So let's jump into the settings for this one, and let's go into expert settings. Now I have the backlight all the way up to 50. You notice how when I use HDR, the settings change as compared when I use SDR. So that's a really cool option as well. I think the KS does the same thing. I don't remember, but uh, at least this one does. So. I have the backlight all, all the way up to 50 because you know you need this <clears throat> in order for you to have to get better picture with HDR picture mode. Now the contrast is uh, actually brightness is uh, in the middle right there zero that's totally fine. Contrast is all the way up to 50 same thing out of the box. Now they use contrast all the way up to 50. I don't know if you guys if you guys been following me before you notice how I always put contrast all the way to 100 which is the maximum value you can use on the KS. Well, same thing over here now that they, I guess Samsung noticed that and now they're changing that. I mean, I'm, I'm just adjusting the camera a little bit. I want it to be a little bit more straight. All right, so just bear with me, guys. There it is, I think that's, that's better, a little bit. All right, so let's go into sharpness. I lower down to one, the value. You know, I always said sharpness, you don't need enough more um, uh, sharpness here in this picture it looks absolutely beautiful with gaming and 4k resolutions or higher no, actually not higher than that it's just higher is the maximum but you don't need sharpness anyways color is at 25 which is like halfway so this means on the ks is around 50 the value all right so we're gonna go down local dimming i still have it on high cost contrast enhancer or uh, dynamic contrast this one is on low Right, color tone is standard. Let me see how. Oh, actually, I like it in warm. I always like it in warm one. I don't know. It's just like the sweet spot for me. Uh, gamma, I have it in, in zero. Just leave it like that. Color space native. Let's see how we do this in auto. No, no, I don't like it. I don't like it. I feel like native has more, has better colors. Yeah, definitely native this time, even with HDR, and that's it. So, okay, so keep in mind, these are my settings. These are the ones that I use. If you want to use something else, make sure you use something that works for you the best, okay? So these are the settings that I'm using for this game, and oh man, look at these guys. Also, let's check out the ghosting. There is a little bit of ghosting here, as you guys can see. But it's not as bad as uh, uh, God of War. You guys see it? It's not as bad as God of War. Yeah. Oh, man. This game still looks absolutely gorgeous, guys. Let's jump into the water and let's take a shower right here. this water effect okay she's swimming she's swimming like a little dolphin oh in the tail I got you man how many it's a powerful pig hold to search the boar let's take it take everything yeah guys so let me know what you guys think about this. If uh, if you have any questions, let me know as well. I really like this feature. In some games, work better than others. Like in this one, I I do see no. I do also notice the ghosting, but it's not as pronounced as as other games. You know, so I guess the cool the cool thing about this feature is that you can turn it off if you don't want to. Or you can uh, adjust it as well if you don't want to, you know, if you want to reduce the motion and the judder and everything. You can always adjust it. That's what I like about Samsung TVs. They have so many options and they're so easy to use. And they just give you really, really a lot of control of those features and options. Oh, man. Now, let's see if there's any difference if I have... Uh, you know, like this one is HDR. Let's turn off HDR. Let's try SDR. So let's do it right now. So HDR, let's switch to SDR. So this is with SDR. Uh, I do notice how colors 
are not as pronounced as with how they are with HDR but I didn't see much of a difference so uh, let's go switch back to let's go back to HDR here we go so this is back with HDR yeah I do notice the colors they they have better better color but it's not as pronounced as the KS that I noticed remember the KS 8000 is a quantum dot LED TV so uh, yeah those quantum dots they enhance the colors all right guys so that's it for me right now I'm Jolster let me know any questions that you have in the comments below thank you so much for stopping by and uh, on my next video I'm going to, tr to tr um, test the Xbox One X to see how it looks with this Samsung NU8000 all right I'm Jolster. I'll see you guys in the next one. Jolster out.